we will start from setting constraint on the tree. Okay, so so what do we mean by this? So when we say setting constraint means, let's say when we started, we said that if there is a root node, right? It is further splitted into two uh, child nodes, right? Another, I mean, this child node can become a parent node if it is not 100% pure, it can further split to another, let's say two uh, child nodes, okay? This can go on and on if we don't, uh, you can see if, if we don't, you can say uh, stop it from happening, right? That means if a tree is in your garden, right? And if you don't set a constraint, that is you are not pruning the tree, right? It will keep on growing. You know, it can outgrow your expectation. It can outgrow uh, till what you want it to look like, okay? And that is not what we want it to be. Why? It is very simple. Let's say we started with 50 points, okay? Let's say 30 came here, 20 came here. I'm not talking about how many, let's say, uh, total point I'm talking, weight, weight of this particular node, okay? Now out of this 21, maybe from one class, 10, maybe from other class, right? Now another split, uh, we are trying to do, it became like 24 and six, right? Again, this will further split, right? So it can keep on going till the time it, it achieves a node which is 100% pure, correct? That is what the tendency of a decision tree is going to be? Correct. Okay. Now, what do I mean by 100% pure? 100% pure means that particular node will contain all the data points from single class. Yes, or no, or one, or zero, any class, but only one class, A, B, see any class, but just one class, all the data points in that particular node belong to single class A, single class zero, single class one. Now, if, if I let it outgrow, it is certain that we'll get 100% pure. That means, and that is what I need, right? If I tell any node that whatever data point belongs to this node can be classified as a can be classified as B or zero or one or C or anything, right? That is our purpose. But then why we need pruning here? The reason is very simple. Because it is certain that yes, we'll get 100% pure. But what if we get one data point here and then it outgrow to let's say the leaf nodes. These, these will be leaf nodes. Yes, no, terminal nodes or leaf nodes. Let's say 20 leaf nodes we got, all the, all, all the uh, leaf nodes has one or two data points. Is that what I want it to look like? No, right? No. Because if, if at last node, we are, we are having only one data point, that means it is certain if I have only one data point in my node, it is anyway certain that that will belong to single class and that will be 100% pure, correct? Right. Yes. So that is the reason I don't want it to outgrow a certain limit, right? There are multiple reasons. One reason I just told this reason. Another reason is this can become very complex, right? And that is the reason we set constraint on our tree. What are those constraints? We are going to see one by one, right? There can be multiple, right? And that is what we also call as hyperparameter tuning. This is also one of the hyperparameter tuning. So this is one of the few parameters that is uh, channelized or that is regulated by the user or the data scientist in order to make the tree useful uh, for the problem that you are using it for, right? Understood? Now, how, how, what are the few things? So let's say, can I set a constraint on minimum, right? Minimum samples for a node 
to split right right yes so that means i am saying that if i set this criteria to 20 right 20 what is that means if if my samples inside any node is less than 20 let's say it is 19 or 18 or let's say in this case it is 6 will it further split no even if it is not 100% pure this particular node will not split right this is exactly 20 so it will split but i am pretty sure <coughs> that these two nodes won't split yes no correct this will split and let's say if one is 22 and uh, or, or let's say one is 21 and another one is 3 then this will not split this will further split and it will also stop at one point of time yes or no why because i have set this constraint understood now you will say that if if any node is not 100% pure how will we how will we justify uh, that which what is the class of that node we justify or we find out by looking at the majority let's say if there are 24 or in this case this is not the leaf node this is the leaf node let's say for example and no further split so 21 let's say 17 belongs to positive class and 4 belongs to negative class correct now what is the majority here 17 so i'll say even though it is not 100% pure but i'll say that this particular node belongs to positive class so anything which comes it let's say a new data point comes here that means i'll say it as a positive right the class of that new data set will be positive understood so uh, dhruv if it is 10 and 11 then in that case how we can determine what is the majority there uh, 11 of course yeah ha so 11 will be there okay, okay. right that is how models work right there is no you can say there is no uh, intelligence there in that sense correct once you have said that you have to select majority then you have to select majority that's all correct yes no yes. yes if i say that you have to take all the values greater than 10 right so your any equation let's say you have written an equation and you have suggested that any value which is greater than 10 is fine even if you get 10.000001 your model will select it or not or your function will select it or not yes so that is the case here okay so let's talk about the second okay similarly there can be multiple constraint one of it is min samples for a terminal node this is for the final node right I, I, sorry any node that we spoke right minimum sample for any node to split right now what is the second point says min sample for a terminal node right Min sample for a terminal node. Let's say if I set a constraint of this to ten, what does that mean? Means the terminal node could could not have a sample less than ten. Cannot have. That means if any split is dividing in two parts in which one of the terminal node is having less than ten or yes less than 10 in this case why because we have set it as 10 just for example right then that is not qualified for a terminal node that means that split won't happen understood right so in a way what we did we just pruned our tree here understood yes yes okay right yeah few of others are let's say i am saying maximum depth this is mostly we use this is the hyperparameter that we mostly regulate 
maximum depth first of all what is the depth of a tree let's assume that we are talking about a tree like this right what is the depth of this tree three huh three two three mm -hmm, mm -hmm. think about it what is the depth of a tree how do you decide two. the depth of a tree zero one Hmm. Zero one. Uh, the root not will be zero, I think. Right? Zero. Uh, then one. Then two. See, first of all, see depth is of you know a, a tree, a decision tree, right? Is the length of longest path. What is the longest path here? So if I have to take the longest path, right? So this is the root node. So my my splitting starts here. So this and this or this. These two, any I can choose. Yes, no. Yes. Right. Yes. Now the path, the number. I mean the maximum depth, right? Or the depth basically of any tree is. Some people will think it as two, which is fine. even if they think it as two before i teach them and if you guessed it i don't blame you right but how the depth is calculated is based on the number of nodes right number of nodes so what is the number of nodes in the longest path 3 3 so what is the depth of this 3 3 three. understood now let's say if i if i constrain set a constraint on the maximum depth that means let's say if i said 3 maximum depth should be 3 not more than that so any further split can happen after this no no further split why because the maximum depth itself is set to 3 so 1 2 3 after that there is no split why because i have set that at any point what should be the maximum depth 3 is it understood yes yes okay what what can be another uh, you know few of the things see if you imagine it to uh, look like a tree so there can be something like maximum number of terminal terminal nodes right this can also be so what is the number of terminal nodes here in this particular tree 3 3 right so this is one this is first Two. terminal node second, this is second and, and this is third correct yes so let's say let's say if this constraint was not set and assuming that it will keep on splitting, splitting. right yes. but if i set remember this is not i haven't set this constraint i am only talking about this so what i have done is i have said that maximum first of all let me write that we have let's say set now maximum number of terminal nodes let's see if i have said um five correct so this is how many terminal nodes are there three so there can be one more split possible yeah. one this split is also possible now how many terminal nodes are there five five after that is there any possibility of further split no why because we have set we have this decided. constant yes correct yes similarly there can be multiple more things see this is i cannot cover each and everything but you are understanding this right and that is the reason in in our first class what we did is we put and stress on the terminologies now if someone tomorrow comes to you and ask you that you can set this particular constraint based on the terminology you can understand what constraint he is asking to set yes, yes or no yes or you yourself can go ahead and see what there can be thousands of such uh, you know constraint that you can set i'm just covering few of it but it is easy right once you know the concept Drew, can you just repeat that depth wala again one? 
once again because there are two paths right one is going like uh, 90 degree and one is straight so then, in this there are two paths right yes. okay let's talk about it what is the depth of this tree one only hmm? two. one two two, two. were were you present in the class when i was teaching this yes are you sure yeah what is the concept that i just taught uh, for finding the depth can you repeat uh where there is splitting uh, nodes maximum how, nodes how to find out the depth nodes so we calculate node maximum nodes uh, what is the nodes here one what is the node here the where one two so what you said in the answer see repeating i always ask myself two or three times repeating is not a problem for me i am again repeating okay i can repeat multiple times but it pains me when you guys don't concentrate when i am telling the very simple thing i cleared this confusion yes or no what i said i said that people who said that the depth is 2 they might be thinking that we are counting the branches yes but instead what we have to count nodes one this is what i said right yes so first you should be clear how to calculate the depth is that clear for you yes so what is the depth in this case 1 2 1 or 2 2 2 okay wait 1 2 3 what is the depth in this case 3 4 5 5 hmm 5 correct yes yes now i got it what is the terminal what is number of terminal nodes here or leaf nodes here uh for 5 5 where there is no splitting what is number of root node root node just a minute only one root node main node is one what see don't uh, memorize i said relate it with what real tree how many roots a tree can have one only one so why are you turning the pages i'm just confused okay see concentrate on what i am teaching okay yes you understood now yes. if i set the constraint yeah yeah i got it now wait wait let me repeat uh, i know few people might be confused also but they are not asking okay now let's say this is this is what longest path longest path right yes. now how many nodes encountered here starting from the root Five. 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 Right. See, sometimes they don't consider the root node. It's fine. See, it's all about the convention. You know what we are talking about, right? Either it is n or n minus one. That's all, right? Mm. But it is not going to be very far away, right? Currently, we are looking at two and three. Then that is the reason you are thinking that. Uh, this is a huge difference right but if if the tree size is big then we will see what needs to be done if it is 2 or 3 or 4 we need to do some trial and error wherever our precision recall and all those things fits better right now what i was talking is this is the longest path right now what will you do you will count the number of nodes starting from the root to the terminal terminal node, node. right yes and now if i set the constraint let's say this is the tree that has grown by itself now if i set the terminal node to be 3 what i actually did is the tree cannot grow beyond depth 3 so what i did is i removed this part of the tree understood if i set it to 4 then i'll remove this part if i set it to 5 that means this is the tree no further split then clear hello yes yes rub okay
what is what is the fifth thing that we were talking about that is maximum feature to consider for split right so every node has total features or weight of that particular node yes or no so i said 24 data points came to this node six went to this node that is what we were calculating in the terms of weights also yes no correct now if i set that the maximum features that any node can have is this much right or let's say minimum features right so what i am doing is i am setting a constraint for that particular node to split let's say if i set it to uh, there are multiple things you can use log n where n is the total features total number of features some people may set under root of n right we will see this but i am just saying concentrate on this thing what is the value you should never concentrate right this can change i can set it to any uh, you know number also if i have the value of n i can set it to any number right but usually what is this particular thing means are you able to understand tell me so you mean to mention like maximum features is like uh, uh, the data points for each node right huh no the maximum features uh, you have mentioned is like what uh, is maximum feature for any particular node right see total total features will be available where root node correct right root node there also i can set a constraint you understand because root node is also a node correct i am not saying i am not staying there but let's say further further i am saying i am talking about any node right any node a b this node or 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 this node any node right now if i'm talking about let's say this node i am saying what is the maximum right maximum what is the maximum features or can be there considered for any node to split right so in in scikit learn this particular parameter is called max features right i'm coming to that right i'm coming to that <coughs> in a minute but is it understood yes so let's say let's say that uh, you have you have uh, 100 features right and you have set max features which is this particular thing to be 50 now each time we are looking to find the split you randomly select 50 features and then you you are using them to actually decide which of these 50 features uh, is the best feature to use or whatever way the selection works you are doing that correct so out of the total features you are selecting you are you can only select this many feature and that is the reason what we are telling it as maximum feature understood yes no no actually out of 100 features we are selecting 50 features so that is the criteria like how much uh, features we can so select. i am saying let's say if the total number of features available in our data set is let's say 100 right and if i have said that max features is equal to let's say out if if not 50 let's say 20 i'm just changing it 20 now so what does it mean it means that every time you are trying to split right every time you are trying to split you are finding 20 best features you understood like out, a, of, out of the total available you are only finding the 20 features to split or if it is defined as uh, max feature is 10 you are selecting 10 so how does it help how does it help at any point at any point 
it is reducing it is reducing the number of features at any node are we ourselves are reducing na you cannot use total available feature which was 100 in our case you can only use 50 you can only use 20 you can only use 10 rule is like a setting a pareto rules no it is like setting a pareto rules 80 to 20 rules i'm not getting your uh, exact word that you are using can you, you know the pareto rules and which is uh, maximum of comes from the uh, pareto rule okay okay that is what you are talking about yeah 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 okay okay no see here i am saying that we have available features that can be n right n can be my available feature n can be anything 100 in this i have taken example it can be 10000 right it can be let's say 500 also but i am saying that for any node what is the maximum feature that you can consider is only this much so available features how how much my any node can use to split is very less than why because i have set a constraint this is the maximum that you can use it is like your your father right your father has you know uh, you know 1 lakh rupees in his piggy bank right but he is telling that at any point you can only use 1000 right so though the total feature or total money that is available with your father is 1 lakh you can only use how much thousand why because your father has set constraint what is the max money that you can use right so this is this is the num i mean this is this is the money that you can use out it doesn't matter how how much money he has in his account or in his piggy bank right the only this much you can use right that means this much is available for you so at each node if we let's say set this criteria at each node so what it will do it will try to select the best feature we will further we are going to see how there is a term called feature importance so in random forest which is multiple decision tree when we grow what happens actually is out of all the available feature we actually rank based on which feature is important which fe feature is not important like that you understood so that is the reason let's see if i am telling 1000 so it will try to take best understood uh, why i am not able to relate is because earlier when we studied the split methods we mm -hmm. were considering one feature at a time right like performance class so mm -hmm. those are basically one feature and then we were dividing based on that mm -hmm. so here i am not able to relate like if money is one lakh money is one feature right mm -hmm. uh, and no 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 we were splitting based on one feature right, right. that will always happen i am not talking about splitting did i speak about splitting no no i what i said at any node how many maximum feature is available right yeah so i am relating that uh, uh, one fee, uh, since like uh, suppose we were splitting on Uh, one one feature the de decision tree we were making on one feature so mm -hmm. i am not able to relate like how much are no decision features. tree we were not making for one feature that is a incorrect statement splitting we were doing one by one right one feature we used yeah, for yeah, splitting one. the best feature right 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 here i am saying i am selecting you know i am not using see here at node at root node let's see if i have 100 data points so i can use 100 or or in in that sense 100 all the features i can use right the total features further here what happens when i'm growing a tree if i give an option that the maximum feature available to you is not the total feature that you can see you can only use a limited number of features and that is what i'm setting constraint what do you mean by constraint i'm not allowing you to use utilize the whole feature the reason can be anything maybe i don't want the complexity correct time complexity space complexity 
Yes or no? Yeah. So, yeah, so uh, I through... myself am telling that if n features are available, I myself am setting a constraint that maximum feature you have to consider for split can be maximum. I'm saying when I use this word, that means that is a constraint. We are studying constraint only. No, there is no compulsion that you have to do it itself. But I'm saying that this is also available for you to set a constraint on the maximum features that you can consider for split for any mode you can uh, sorry for any node that you can assign yes you are asking something okay yeah. so there will be uh, multiple uh, splits happening but we are there limiting the number of features yes uh, yes so see at each node split is happening yes no yes if your if your tree is growing that is because of split right you understand but but that is because of uh, data points right the data points in one feature see first of all i'll say i'll tell you don't relate these two things those these two things are different correct i am saying forget about splitting i am saying even if it is not splitting what is the you know features available for or or features available for a particular node we are talking about that whether or not splitting is another thing right once you get this then you think about what to do next if i have this much features let's say if you have the money you got 1000 from your father then you will only think that where to split this money 1000 in 10 into let's say buying uh, something uh, 50 into playing games 30 into uh, you know giving my friend or something like that right so what i am relating feature as like you have a money Uh, you have some money you have house you have a car so those are three features mm -hmm. and then how you divide it is is that uh, i am considering but if money you have 1 lakh i am uh, that what my understanding is that is one feature and then you are uh, distributing the data points like 1 lakh into 10000 11000 but feature i am considering as like if a house is a feature car is a feature mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, yes. money is a feature yes you are right yes so, you are right so that's what i am not able to relate like in uh, i get your example like money we divide like 10000 11000 so those are data points but i am not able to relate that how features are in like a single node How features are in single node? Uh, Dhru, uh, did you mean like a feature is like the uh, count of uh, data points? No, no. Okay. So let's say if I'm talking about at any point, right? At any point, let's say we spoke about performance, right? Class. What was the third one? Height. 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 Right. So at in all the splits we were seeing that in our data set not always but in our data set class was giving the best split right so what we did root node we had 20 so we divided based on the class so the first split will only happen according to the class right right you understand but let's say now i have ninth class students here 10th class students here right it was giving if if i'm not wrong 8 uh, something like and 2 uh -huh, 8 and 2 right 8 playing and uh, 4 3 7 plus 1 8 and 2 and 3 3 6 to 8 and 2 not playing right but still right. it is uh, not 100% pure i can further split it right further split it okay now the i have already divided it in class can i divide further in based on the class no i'll have to use another feature that means at this point all the features are available see features splitting means we are using a feature to divide the data yes or no that that doesn't mean we are we don't we, we have removed all other feature no all other feature are still present that means i'm i can still talk about any individual's performance i can still talk about height of any individual which are other two features of my data set understood yes i used a feature just to bifurcate that means let's say if i go to your class and tell you 
or or let's say whole ninth class is there i went and tell that okay what you can do i have whole list of data set available what is the marks what is which section you belong what is the gender what is the marks in physics chemistry mathematics like that i went to the class and and i said people who belong to uh, sec section a can come one side and section b can come one side what what actually i did i split it based on the section right did i remove or, or or did i remove any other feature out of those data point yes no no now i have two sections available right i know these are the two for bifurcation or two splits right now i can tell section a students now i cannot ask which section you belong because that will be a funny question because i know all the people on the left side is section a on the right side is section b right now i'll ask another question what another question i can ask what is your physics mark but based on that i can set a criteria physics marks more than 50 go to one side uh, less than 50 go to one side what i actually did is now i am further splitting based on any other criteria understood my point okay okay yes now let's say there were uh, if i i took a very uh, you know small example of three features i could have 300 features right the one way is i could have used all the features here further 299 features would be available at this point of time further it will keep on decreasing yes no right yes but what i am saying is instead of using all the available features maximum feature that you can use is not 299 or 300 you can only use 10 feature that 10 is feature. what i mean by constraint okay now is Got it clear it. yes okay cool Uh, so one question is how are we uh, deciding like what is the criteria based on which we are setting the this maximum constraint what is the criteria like suppose so, if i have 1000 features uh -huh. then how do okay, i, I decide your that you are saying that what is the what is guys please mute yourself if you are not speaking okay what she asked is that is a good question what is the criteria how did i uh, selected to out of n features i have taken only 10 or 20 or 30 right this was your question or let's say under root of n or log of n right this was your question yes true yeah so this question is good but the answer is it depends on which data set you are working on right so in general in real life scenario what you do is you actually try so let's say i start with depth 2 depth 3 depth 5 if still not getting that then i'll increase the duration right after that let's say i'll do 50 and i'll say that it is you know increased or increased by bit then i'll try to come back and see at 30 what is the value so it is how you do trial and error in real life right that is the way you do here there is no such approximation technique but yes one thing i can tell you that you can decide right how much overfitting or underfitting you can uh, you want to see in your data now what is overfitting and underfitting we are coming to that also we are, I'll, i'll be teaching that also okay understood this point yeah dr yes okay so there is no set agenda or no set uh, parameter which i can tell you okay if this is the given in question this is the number of data set you have to take 10 20 no it depends whether you want still less or more right how will you how will you check based on the your matrix and how will it depend upon let's say in any problem you will decide that the type of result i want is getting fulfilled by recall some some people will be fine when they see the precision right if there is a mix so f1 score some people are happy only with the accuracy right some people are saying okay accuracy or misclassification should be less right so indirectly they mean accuracy should be more some people are looking at roc auc of roc so area under the curve of roc curve right so it depends now based on that if you are if if you are looking at your recall right and you are thinking that it is decreasing right or increasing 
you should be able to understand whether my model is overfitting or underfitting though i haven't explained that but just by the name the term overfit and underfit you are able to understand what i mean to say yes i'll explain that in detail but for now just understand by just by the word okay so this is this these all things you will take decision based on that okay now one quick point all these constraint can be used and can be said as one term which you studied at the starting what is that term pruning pruning artery right now all the concepts that we learned if i tell you that there is a name to it like max leaf nodes what does it mean maximum number of leaf nodes so there you will see these type of word so max underscore depth we have already spoke so all these things we have spoke right just you have to relate with the name what is maximum number max leaf nodes right what is the maximum number of terminal nodes that is present what is minimum min sample leaf what should be the minimum number of sample for a leaf node to split right or a terminal node for a terminal node right what should be the maximum depth all these things okay understood there can it can go on and on i'm just giving you few things that uh, is required okay now coming back now this pruning concept can be used in two ways one is pre pruning what is pre pruning pre pruning is basically have you seen any bonsai bonsai tree yes. yes what do they do that they actually know because they are very expert of that okay they know how much you have to let them grow even before you have uh, you know seed the uh, or, or, or when you have seed it okay at that point of time also they know what they need to do if you are that much expert that means you know what maximum depth you want to uh, put your tree for right what is what what is what what should be the maximum leaf node all these things all the parameters that i say you can previously set correct what is the other method post pruning which we all will be doing and all of us will do actually do right post pruning we all work with post pruning so let's say i am a gardener i just want my tree to grow and then i'll set the constraint let's say i'll check with the def 3 def 4 def 5 def 10 right and then i'll say no def 6 works fine for me so i'll use def 6 clear so i am letting my tree grow and then later i'll decide where to cut my tree that is what post pruning is i'm using the phones first and then i'm paying right i'm paying first and then using my phone clear so that is that is the difference is it understood this the process very theoretical concept but just trying to put it in your mind so that if someone asks you uh you you should be able to understand clear yes yes okay before i go ahead and uh you know see ensemble models before that let's try to see you know bias and variance so you might have seen this word bias and variance trade off by the way in data science most of the things are trade off right precision and recall is also a trade off yes or no kind of yes yes so so there are multiple things which are a trade off okay now let's first of all define what bias is right so what is a bias in plain english what is a bias so bias can be defined as you know difference uh between average prediction of our model
model and the correct value which it's trying to predict. Correct? Now, if I ask you, right, if I ask you, if I ask you this simple question that why my B is always like this. So if I say that if the bias is high or more, right, what does it mean? Our that prediction is wrong. No, no. Sir, <laughs> so, see, obviously these two are not good words. Okay. Not good words. So there should be a trade-off. How it should be, I'm just telling you. So when we are saying high bias, that means model, model is paying little attention to the data. When we are training the model, model is paying little attention to data. So in other words, it oversimplifies right so it oversimplify the model right understood now that is an error how okay let me just tell you uh, by using okay okay before before i go ahead okay before i go ahead and explain all these things to you let me explain variance also right variance also you understand what i am saying very little attention to data oversimplify it is oversimplifying okay that means if if my data set is like this oversimplification means still i am going like this okay understood or what is the what is the undersimplification that means I am just, or, or you can say that I am overfitting is going like this. I'm just following each, which also, which also is an error. This is also wrong. This is also wrong. Oversimplification is also wrong. Undersimplification is also wrong. Understood? Yeah. Okay. It will be more understood when we uh, are going to understand the variance, right? bias we say that our model is you know oversimplifying the data right so what is variance variance we all know right so uh, it is basically the variability of the model or uh, prediction we can say right variability in the prediction right for okay what what is the variability we all know this point right so a given data point or we can say simply that it is given data point you might get confused so i'm just writing that it gives the spread right spread of our data set right yes or no this is what we know the variance for right now Sir. what does a high variance means so variance so if the variance is high so what does it mean is pays a lot of attention i said right pays a lot of attention attention to training data
what happens when you pay a lot so pays paying a lot of attention means it is kind of memorizing it is not generalizing so whenever you are learning something if you try to memorize your concept will be not good yes or no right correct that means you are just following each and every point that is happening currently with our class right yes, yes. no are i am saying yes 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 okay so paying a lot of attention is also bad that means let's say if it will it will it will be very good training score but when it comes to testing or unseen data then they will perform very bad you understand so that means in my class few people are performing very good but whenever i give assignment all all their intelligence is lost okay so that means in a way in a way they are not spending time to generalize the concept and that is what the var higher variance means understood so <clears throat> correct that means score difference training high testing low okay understood now mathematically mathematically i don't want to get into the derivation but mathematically you know the total error total error of any prediction or any model can be given as bias square okay plus variance right plus an error term which is irreducible you cannot reduce that particular error right so let's say uh, i am just setting it as okay let me write it as in irreducible error as the name suggest we cannot reduce this so what we will do we will try to regulate these two understood yes bro uh -huh. if the like uh, variance is very low so then no sir i'm coming to that i i am coming to that let me explain all this okay. first okay. and then if you still feel that you have any confusion you may ask okay yeah yeah fine okay cool now see let us talk about underfitting and overfitting right i just use this word on the top right so underfitting and overfitting before starting bias variance we use this word right now what happens is when we talk about underfitting that means how how do we define underfitting so model is unable to capture right unable to capture what a uh, underlying pattern of data that is what we call as generalization yes or no it is not able to catch right over simplifying the model correct now if if it is doing that if it is doing that then what is actually happening which which out of bias and variance which one is high and bias. which one is low bias is high variance is low correct so that means as we defined the bias earlier so bias is high and variance is low yes no yes yes okay now on the other hand when we talk about overfitting right so overfitting in in the plain english if i tell you it happens when our model right model uh captures the noise along with the data
this is width right this is width right so what 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 do we mean by this what do we mean by this so let's say if you are following each data point correct if you are following each data point let's see if i am building a linear regression model okay what should be what should be a best fit line looks like this is how it should be correct correct now if if i build the best fit line like this so the error will be zero but our is our model learning no it is memorizing no. correct yes to my point so that is what the difference between generalizing and memorizing okay so if i ask out of my if i give any training data point it will give me 100 it will tell me exact result with 100% accuracy okay but what if i give any unseen data right if if i give any unseen data then what happens there will be error there will be error right high chance of error because it has not generalized so that means our child is just memorizing so that means all the sums which i have taught if i am giving that he or she is performing 100% but when it comes to any other sum given in the test they are not able to perform understood and that is what we don't want to happen correct so here the bias is low the variance is high understood we don't want to go for underfitting or overfitting first of all let me quickly right let me quickly uh, you know make a kind of graph for you so if i have to tell overfitting right overfitting so let me just so let's say if i'm talking about overfitting this is how my model is learning right this concept is not related to any single model right it is this concept you can use in any other mod any other model also the concept remains the same underfitting overfitting right what is this is it underfitting or overfitting let me overfitting overfitting huh overfitting 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 right because it is kind of memorizing or in a way it is capturing noise also along with the data okay what is noise noise can be defined as anything which is not uh, which is which is not telling you the exact trend of the data okay it might be due to outlier or tell me whether it it has high vary first of all is it overfitting or underfitting overfitting so overfitting okay tell me whether it has low bias low variance high bias high variance what is this low bias high variance high variance high variance so high variance we have defined this correct these see bias variance trade off they always ask so concentrate here okay this is all theoretical concept which you have to take care when you are building okay now let me talk about the another case what is that another case if i have spoke about overfitting the another case is obviously underfitting under right now let's say in the same data set right kind of the same data set let's say if i have the same type of data set i am building right kind of same trying right now uh, if i have this type of data set and this is the model that i have built right this is the model that i have built is not it underfitting if let's see if this was our model that would have been anyways fine right passing from at least maximum points but if this is our model or this is the best fit line how will how will we how will we uh, perceive this as obviously underfitting yes no yes, yes. oversimplifying the data and 
if it is the case of overfitting obviously there will be high bias high bias i don't want both to occur right i don't want both to occur so let us assume that i have what is the best way what is what is what is the ideal scenario right if let's say this is the data set right for example right if this is the data set and if if my model looks like this this is what both is low right low variance and low bias right this is a kind of a balance balance of or you can say good bias variance trade off correct understood right now let me let me tell you what what actually happens in the real life scenario so what actually happens is whenever let's say on x axis i have models complexity so complexity of our model we spoke right if if our model is too complex right too complex model and this is the error how the error and the bias variance first of all the total error is a function of square of the bias term and absolute value of the variance term this you understand and that is the reason we will keep this in mind while plotting the bias variance okay let us first of all draw a uh, which color should i use here okay let us use black color for bias so what actually happens what we are saying if the complexity increases bias decreases or increases increases ha huh? are you sure complexity increases bias decreases bias decreases right because bias is where our underfitting happens right so if our if i making my model more complex and not very over simplifying then obviously my bias is decreasing bolo yes no yes yes what is bias high bias when my model is over simplified right and now what how i am curing that is i am making my model more complex and not over simplified right that means somehow my error is decreasing so this is where my bias is decreasing but it is not the absolute value it is the square so i am just writing the bias square any confusion here on the other hand if i look at if i look at let me write a pen of different color now what i am saying is on the other hand if if my complexity is increasing if my complexity is very less obviously what my variance will be less yes no yes yes further yes. further if if it will if my complexity will increase what will happen my variance will also increase bolo yes no yes yes correct correct so this is nothing but my variance correct so what is what is, I, and and if if i have to draw the total error so total error will look something like this this is nothing but total error which is summation of both square of bias and variance plus obviously irreducible error which cannot be reduced by your model okay so that is the reason we are keeping it like the human error and all we are not talking about why it happened so currently what we are talking about is trade off so bias variance trade off okay understood 
Yes. Now, what at what point should you choose a model? So you you should always choose somewhere here, right? Intersecting. Because if I'm taking low variance, obviously my bias is more. If I'm taking low bias, my variance is more. So in in anything in between these, uh, obviously, see, data science doesn't work on a point estimate. You have to always select anything if you are getting here, here, or here. It is fine. So this is what you have to find out in order to get the optimum balance. Understood? Clear? Bolo yes, no. Hmm? Always remember what is for bias whether it is underfitting or overfitting, okay? And if we are talking about underfitting, whether bias is more or variance is more, people usually get confused. Keep this thing in mind, set up an agenda, how to remember this. Anyone can use any technique to remember, but you have to keep this in mind, okay? Sure. Okay? Coming coming back okay <clears throat> so if someone asks you and tells you that hey your model is what your model is uh, overfitted what does he mean variance is high huh bias is low variance, variance is high variance is high bias is low that's fine but how will you detect it? I know total error, then you will calculate. No, not from that. Just by looking at the matrix, how will you detect? It cover all the data points. See this? Yeah, your the testing score will be... will be very good. But your testing score will be very bad. I took the example also. Your child is kind of memorizing. If someone memorizes, obviously they will perform 100% on the things that they have memorized. But yes. since they haven't learned, so in unseen things or unseen data, which is our test data, they will underperform? Yes. Yes right. or no? And how will you detect uh, underfitting? Or if someone tells you that your model is underfitting, that Same. is simply can be detected if your error is very high, right? Yes. Your score, training score also is very low, correct? Yes. So that simply means your model is not able to generalize even the training data and then it is underfit. Clear? Okay. So, uh, we built few concepts here. So let me save it as, uh, what should I save it as? Okay, there are a few more concepts and then we'll save it, okay. There is a concept called cross-validation. Has anyone heard about it? Hmm? So we just spoke about underfitting and overfitting. You all know what is uh, overfitting and underfitting, right? Now, one technique in order to uh, prevent those things is, is called cross validation. Okay. We are going to see what is cross validation. What is the name suggest? What is the name suggest? Tell me. Cross checking. Cross checking, yes. What else? What is validation? 
we we don't have a reference to verify so it's basically you validate the results okay so we need to do uh, the test and the train and we need to compare whether it is uh, same or nearby okay uh, before studying cross validation how how is till now how were we doing the validation of our model uh, the train that's why train why test man is why product Ah, we were like matrix. Who gave that answer? So Which that's answer? actually correct answer. So, what do we mean by validation? So we always train our model and then we validate our model. Yes or no? Currently, what we are doing is we are splitting the data into train and test. Okay, randomly we are splitting on any ratio seventy five twenty five eighty twenty or anything seventy thirty anything. Usually these three. Okay, now that is one of the validation technique. Okay, now cross validation is you can say an advanced validation technique, right? How it is happening is, I'll be talking about that, but just concentrate on the first the word validation. So validation is used whenever we are going to see, or you can you can think it in the terms of we are comparing the error. Yes or no, or you can say it is nothing but error estimation of the model. How my model performed with the seen data and how the mo model performed with the unseen data. Correct. Now I am generalizing the concept. I am not saying training and test because in cross validation we are not actually using training and test. In a way it is, but I am not using that word. Now I'll, what what word I am using? Seen data and unseen data. Correct. What is seen data? Training data, which used for training. Training purpose, correct. And what is unseen, uh, un uh, unseen data, which my data. model has not seen. It can be anything. It can be uh, in train test split. It is test data. In cross validation, it can be anything. Out of bag sample, O B sample, we call it. We are coming to that. Okay. So before going ahead, what if I tell you? What if I tell you? that if let's say first of all cross validation can be anything but we always use k fold cross validation there are other two methods also but 99.5% of the time you are using we are going to use k fold cross validation and this is also very important in terms of interview okay first of all let us see conceptually what does it mean let's say this is our data Correct. This is our data. Okay. Now what I am doing is, let's say I am doing ten folds of our data. Right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and let's say one more. Ten. Okay. This is my first fold. Second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. Seven, eight, nine, and ten. So ten folds of our data. Earlier, what were we doing in the terms of train test split? It was only two sets, right? Obviously, obviously, we were keeping the training more and testing less, right? Yes. Now here, what we are doing is my overall data, right? If let's say if it is thousand rows, what I am doing is. I am taking a subset. Let's say k fold means k subsets. Understood? So let's say I am assuming if I have thousand rows, so what will be this this equal equal folds? Obviously. So how what is what is going to be here? How many? Hundred. Hundred. Similarly, hundred here, hundred here, hundred here, hundred, 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 hundred. Splitting is not. you know very complex thing we all know how we did in the past okay what is more important is let's say what i am doing is i am using nine folds or eight folds let's say for example it depends on you but let's say nine folds for my training and what is another left out i'll use that for testing purpose in first iteration in the second iteration what i am doing is now 
I use two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten for training and one for testing. Yes, no. So test and train. So I'm using the first fold for testing. All others for training. Yes, no. Yes. In the other iteration, next iteration, what I'm doing is I'm using second fold for my testing purpose and all other, including one also. So one, three, four, five up to 10 for training. Third for testing, one, two, four, five up to 10 for training. Fourth for testing, one, two, three, five, seven, like that. You understand? So one fold for testing all others for training purpose. In that way, what I'm doing is I am constantly, you know, uh, training a model on all the remaining sets and testing it, sorry, training the model on N minus one folds and testing the model on the left out fold. Understood? Yes. Again, I'm doing, again, I'm doing, again, I'm doing. So in a way, what is happening is error estimation is averaged out. How is it going to help us? It is going to prevent us from overfitting. It is not letting my model memorize anything. Why? Because I'm constantly changing. My training is also changing. Yes, no. If I have to prevent my child from memorizing, what I'll do? I'll change the training data. I won't give exactly the same training and I won't explain the addition. Let's say I'm teaching addition. So I won't explain on the same question every time. I'm not explaining on the same example every time. I'm just changing the example. In that way, I'm preventing my child from memorizing. Why? How will be he or she able to memorize? Because I'm changing every time. If I'm showing one thing multiple times, then only they will be able to memorize. I'm changing my, you know, my, my example. My model is not able to remember. And that is what I want. Yes or no? And that is that will prevent us from overfitting. Yes, no. So this is a technique. This is a technique. So cross validation basically is a technique. Right? Now you will say that group. Well, how to how to choose the value of k? What should be the fold? How many folds should I take? Okay. Now see. Again, there is no set rule, but one thing you have to keep in mind while choosing the value of K, that value of K should be chosen such that each train test group, because we are splitting in groups of 10 or 12, in that case, you are taking 12 or 15, right? So you are dividing your whole data set into N groups, let's say, or K groups in this case. So you have to consider that each group or each subset of the data, you know, of, of the data sample is, should be large enough to have a better representation of the population. The concept is coming directly from our inferential stacks. Yes or no? Yes, yes. no? Right. Yes. That is a theoretical concept. If someone asks you, how will you choose the value of K? You should tell that. But in general, in general, 99% of the time, you will use 10 as K, value of K as 10. Not hard and fast rule, but just a thumb rule. Why? The reason can be many things. Why? Because first of all, 10 is what, uh, you know, it, it helps us divide, you know, the, the data set properly. Okay. It is, it is able to estimate the errors also. It is able to, you know, estimate if I have 10 folds, obviously division by 10 becomes very easy. Yes or no? Yes. Okay. Sometimes they use five also. So usually five or 10, 10 mostly, 10 mostly, you will use 10 fold. And then what you will do, you will, you will tell in the term of your uh, college, uh, sorry, in project, 
you will say that I'm using 10 fold cross validation. What does that mean? You're dividing your whole data set into 10 parts, right? And you are using one part for testing, all other for training. So if I have to, you know, tell you, so out of k subsets, so one of the subset is used for what? Testing. Test set. And all others left k minus one as training set. And at last, it is obviously how many how many iteration will happen? K minus one. Ten times. So k k times. Yes, no. Because in first iteration, yes. your first, this will be your uh, test set. This will be your test in second, third. Similarly, if it is equal to n, so in 10 iteration, you will be able to complete, yes or no? So total iteration k. Now at the last, the error estimation, error estimation, bias and variance, let's say, and irreducible error, total error you can calculate, error estimation is averaged out right over all trials why i'm writing all i would have written k or let's say 10 so all these things are same so all trials means all the trials that will be happening and that trial is nothing but iteration T R A I L S. right so trials understood now what is the result what is the result? What it will reduce? It will reduce bias or variance. Reduce variance. Reduce. Huh? Think about it. I said it will prevent you from overfitting. Reduce variance. Reduce variance. So what is, uh, okay, my bad, my bad guys. What we spoke just now, we said that it reduces what? Reduce variance, right? Variance. Yes. It reduces bias also. And it Both. reduces in a way variance also. Because you understand, what we are doing here is we are constantly changing the training set also and test set also. Clear? So in on the one hand, I'm not letting my model to memorize, you know, memorize the uh, you know this thing, uh, mem memorize the data. And on the other hand, what I am telling it is, do not underfit the model or do not oversimplify the model, right? Oversimplification means if I'm constantly changing, see, if I give you one data set, what you will do? You will oversimplify it. Yes or no? And if I change the data set so all the time, what you will do is you will, if, if, if the number of things I'm showing more than, then only you will generalize. Okay, if I'm showing, let's say only lion's picture to you, right? What you will do? You will kind of generalize, okay, this is the color, okay, that is a lion, okay? But I'm showing you 10 different variety of lion. Then what you will do? You will try to generalize, right? This is how it looks, correct? This is how the furs are, this is how the straps are, yes or no? You will try to look more closer details, yes or no? And that is what your you will not do the simplification. Understood? 
बोलो यस नो ओवर सिंप्लीफिकेशन वॉन्ट हैपन इन दैट केस यस नो Yes, but true. Like uh, here, is it not happening? Like it's uh, uh, memorizing the entire data. How is it memorizing? Because we are checking for all, uh, all the thing, no? Arey, but see, you are you are telling your model. So first, in 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 first iteration, what you are telling? Okay, you are saying that at last, your yes. model is able to see all the data. Yes, correct. Yes, This yes. is what you are saying. Yes. 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 No, but my model is trained ten times. How much time you were training your model in when you were splitting your data into train test set? One time. Yeah. One time. So this is the difference here. Correct. So my model is kind of looking at different sets of data, right? Yes, obviously, your out of your nine hundred training, training eight hundred would be same. Only hundred would be changing, but that is changing, no, right? And the purpose, see, you won't always use cross validation. You will use only when you have to create a balance between bias and variance. Otherwise, your train test split holds fine. Got, got my point. So you can consider your. first trial or first iteration as what same as your earlier you will you were doing the training rest nine trials i am just making my model better that's all so i am just increasing the trials okay okay then the train directly that is what i that is what we are trying to do here yes or no yes 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 okay Then, if it is like this, means like the train size and test size will be like ninety ten, no? Train and test size will be ninety ten. Yes, in okay. this case, yes. Okay, okay. But you can, in a way, you can also select this, right? If you if you want it to be eighty twenty, eighty twenty, then what you can do? First to maybe test, then remaining you will train. No, you can use k is equal to five. K is equal to five. So what it will happen? So thousand. Uh, let's say this is thousand, right? So now it will be two hundred per cell, right? So two hundred, two hundred, two hundred, two hundred, and two hundred. Correct. Yes. This will be twenty percent. This will be eighty percent. At eight, any point. Yes or no? Yes. Got my point. So it is up to you how many folds you want to go ahead with. And can we use this uh, K fold cross validation in uh, each and every algorithm, or just uh, here in decision tree? Any algorithm you can use. I said this is, you know, splitting kind of splitting criteria. You can say not the splitting criteria in exact decision tree. but i am saying in in a way this is the way to split your total data right that is from where i started right but i said you want use it everywhere when will you use it when you want to balance between bias bias and variance you want to put a trade off okay clear there are multiple more methods of cross cross validation right some one of it is called stratified k fold cross validation now in that it is using stratified sampling here what we are doing one by one we are taking the samples yes or no or randomly we are taking the one sample out of it and remaining we are taking for training yes or no yes right another way of doing it is that one test set you can choose from stratified sampling you all know what stratified sampling is one strata if you remember my sampling class yes, no right. one will speak now that means you guys are not revising 
so obviously what we are doing we are dividing the whole data set into 10 samples if i am using 10 fold cross validation yes or no now yes. if let's say what i am trying to do or in this case if it is k fold cross validation if it is stratified then what we will do our whole data set will be you know divided into different strata right and what we will do we will do the stratified sampling out of that and the remaining samples as training one strata we will use it for testing purpose understood i am not going to explain right. it again what stratified sampling is okay understood this point cross yeah. validation is understood how it works Yes. Okay. So yes, these are few techniques, irrespective of what you are using, you should be able to understand. So at the end of this particular uh, discussion, you should be able to understand what is bias, what is variance, what is a trade-off between bias and variance, what is overfitting, what is underfitting, what is cross-validation, right? How to select the value of K. If they may ask, they ask these silly questions. The answer is very silly. But still, you have to answer that. You cannot get paused there. Understood? What else we uh, studied? Uh, okay, bias variance trade off. There are multiple things inside this only. Yes, pruning. Pruning, we spoke. Yes, pruning is related to tree based model only. Okay, whether it is, we are going to see random forest also, that is also tree based model. So that is applicable there also. Clear? Is it clear? All these things should be clear till now. Okay, now what I'm uh, going to do is <laughs> Achha, one more type of cross validation, uh, which is mostly used when we are selecting the hyperparameters that is called grid search CV that I'm not covering for now. Once we will see the uh, random forest, then I'll cover that. That is nothing to cover. It is just to show how it makes our life easier, right? How it makes our life easier. Coming back, okay? Where were we? We, we were about to speak about the ensemble model. Do you know what ensemble is as a word in English? What is ensemble? Anyone? See, what happens is when we are talking about the tree, right? Everyone uh, able to hear my voice? Yes. yes. Now, see, if I join, ensemble means when you collect, kind of, you can say, aggregate multiple things together, that is what is called ensemble in plain English, right? How it is useful in the terms of, uh, you know, our decision tree or random forest is we are coming to it in a minute. Okay? Now ensemble, we said that collection of few things or aggregate different things. Now here, since we are studying decision tree, if we aggregate different decision trees, right, then we will make an ensemble model of how out of it. Yes or no? Process I'm saying. If we, if we combine different decision trees, so we will call it an ensemble of my decision trees. Yes or no? Is there any uh, problem in the statement I made? No, it was not clear. So you have to ask, right? I cannot always ask you guys uh, that if what is the problem? Okay, let me repeat. So ensembling means you are doing the collection of few things. I am only talking in the terms of plain English or aggregation. That is what the meaning of ensemble is. You can Google it. Okay. So if your collection or aggregation, 
so currently we are looking at the aggregation of what decision trees currently we are talking about one decision tree right we are starting from root and then we are further dividing the nodes till it reaches the leaf nodes or terminal nodes what is the terminal nodes where we assume it to be 100% pure if we let the tree to grow full yes no this concept is clear till here yes correct now i am saying that this means in plain english we are aggregating different decision tree n number of decision tree right that means we are collecting till now that is the only thing we i spoke till now what is the problem here no it's clear it's clear concentrate right okay now i am saying the collection or aggregation of my decision tree can happen in two ways okay one of it is called bagging another one is called boosting right now the bagging bagging technique another name is called is called as bootstrap aggregation okay now what does it mean so what i'll do is first i'll explain to you bagging okay and then we will go ahead and explain one of the boosting technique okay now see when we talk about acha first of all here in bagging there is a parallel so we are combining different decision tree parallelly right and here the different decision tree see both are both both are the combination of decision tree right but here we are kind of uh, using the decision tree different decision tree parallelly here we are using sequential no need to worry you would be able to understand everything coming to bagging what does bagging mean see what scientist so that if we are growing one tree correct if we are growing one tree we are getting a certain uh, you can say certain accuracy certain precision certain recall all those things right now what if i grow multiple decision tree and the way we took the average out of the way we use this concept in cross validation right we used the, we 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 saw the error or accuracy for each fold and then what we are doing we are averaging the error and that is what we are telling as and we are using it as a metric understood so here also what we can do is we can use the similar kind of concept in a way that let's say if i have this data set which is m cross n concentrate here i am writing capital m and n so if i if someone tells you what is the number of rows here m rows m rows and this is the number of columns sir yes. correct now what i mean to say is if this is my total data set available what i'll do is i'll grow you know let's say n different trees in this case let's say five tree so this is my decision tree 1 this is my decision tree 2 right decision tree 3 decision tree 4 correct and decision tree 5 okay now what i am saying is out of the total available data here i am talking about m1 cross n1 c it is small that means it is not equal obviously that is what i want to show here this is m2 cross n2 understood so in a way i am taking a subset of rows as well as columns right i am taking a subset of rows as well as column and i am feeding it to each of the decision trees okay and that sampling so in a way this is a sample so this is a sample of this m2 cross n2 is a sample of m cross n yes no 
Yes. This sample is the type of sample where you can call it sampling with replacement. What type of sampling it is? Sampling with replacement. So let's say if I have 16 columns, 500 rows and 16 columns, let's say. This is how I'll write. So it can have, let's say, I'm taking an example, right? 200 into 10. This can be 150 into 8. It can be 130 into 12, something like that, okay? So, so you can see, it can be common also. So few, few columns can be common, few rows can be column. I don't know, why? Because I'm replacing the samples back to my original before taking another sample. That is what the sampling with replacement means? Yes. Understood? So that is clear. If it was not sampling with replacement, that means it was sampling without replacement. That means if let's see if I've used 10 columns here, I would not have used those 10 columns in the another sample. Yes, yes, yes. or no? Yes. If I've used 10 here, five here, for this only one column was available for me. Sorry. But that is not the case. Here we are talking about the sampling with replacement. Is it clear? Yes. yes. So can we can we say can we say that uh, this M M one or M two or M three so I'm just writing M I is less than M and N I is less than capital N. Yes. Yes. Yes, correct. Can it be like you can say that it's equal also, right? Yes. But why I have not written equal? I'm coming to that. But for now, is it clear? Yes. Usually, usually, just as a thumb rule, the MI should be two third of M. And NI, right? NI should be under root of it. That is just a thumb rule. So let's say if I have 16 columns, so I'll use four columns here, four here, four here, four here, four here. So if I take, if I build 100 decision tree, I can use all four, four, five, six also. I'm just saying just as a thumb rule, right? Just as a thumb rule, because it has seen that minimum this much is required in order to build a good decision tree or set of decision tree, right? Also, yes, you can write it as equal also, okay? But just in this case, I wanted to keep you in mind that it should be around two third of your axiom. Why you are not using equal to here? See, obviously subset can be equal to the set also. I'm not saying that, but let's see if you have grown the whole tree, what is the purpose of taking the sample understood this concept yes. Are you bolo? yes no yes now what is the concept left now here concentrate you know you can consider this decision tree the first decision tree as an independent decision tree with m1 cross n1 data that means number of row as m1 and number of column as n1 and then you can uh, you know just split it uh, or whatever you want to do split it in training test and then find out the accuracy precision recall all those similarly for this similarly for this 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 so that is what at last what i'm doing i'm taking the average or taking the majority if let's say a new data set comes and my decision tree one say that this is class A, this says class A, this says class B, this says class A, again, this says class B. So I'll say based on the majority vote, so based on the majority vote, what does that data point belongs to? Which particular class? A. A. Understood what I just said? So based on majority I take, and how will the majority come? 
it will come from the individual decision trees clear yes any confusion here why i am not going ahead it here is because after this it is all decision tree right again you can have a you know root node further split will be there right based on any of the columns first and then further subsequent columns or features yes or no so that will that is the whole concept of decision tree that we study right this is called bagging or bootstrap aggregation right which random forest uses as the name suggests what is a forest what is a forest collection of trees trees animals yes. so as we know that forest is basically collection of trees right made up of tree right so forest is made up of tree so let's talk about random forest first any confusion in in bagging technique this uh, drug we are just uh, segregating our sample to different decision tree right hmm and then uh, deciding which is the majority correct yeah. so what is difference between decision tree and random forest decision tree if we have used on this particular model So only one tree we have grown out of this whole rows and columns, and in random forest we are growing multiple trees, because in forest we have multiple trees. Yes or no? Yes. Yes. And we are growing multiple trees, and we are taking, we are asking all the decision tree. Tell me what your result is. Let's say if a new data set comes, I'll ask decision tree one. Okay, tell me. what is the class of this unseen data this entry one will tell me okay the class is one this entry two will tell me okay wait i am telling you tell the time it is calculating i'll ask this entry it says okay this is one this entry two till then says okay zero it says okay it is one and this says okay it is zero what is the majority one one right and i'll i'll tell in random forest it will tell based on the majority okay this is the class of the unseen data based on the majority right not individual see individual decision tree if i'm talking about this decision tree let's say this is misclassification yes or no let's say originally it was one i know you don't know let's say i know that originally it was one but my one decision tree can make a make a fault yes or no yes let's say if there is a movie okay and if that movie is good or bad you are uh, you are asking all of your friend to classify it as good or bad if it is good just tell me uh, the class as one and if it is bad just tell the class as zero let's say for example your friend one told that the movie is good your friend two told that movie is bad similarly all these things so based on majority only you will decide whether this movie is good or bad yes or no are yes no yes. 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 it's not simple yes. example then okay now coming back and we are going to talk about random forest a bit theoretically so again yes so uh, forest is made up of tree and random forest is no exception right so i can say say that forest is made of trees in real life also and random forest what is also made of trees but what type of tree decision tree decision tree see that is what i love about data science and that, that is the reason precisely i am in this field is because there is no high five word coming it is using the same thing why it is called random Just random behavior chosen random sampling random sampling so the sampling that we are doing is randomly correct any 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 row can be qualified in m1 or m2 m3 m4 m5 m5 mn similarly any column can come in n1 n2 m3 so this is random sampling with replacement and that is the reason the name is random why is it called forest 
because it is collection of trees it is not giving any hi fi names to it it is using the same concept which we you know from ages right collection of tree if it is there we call it as forest yes or no what is the yes. another concept yes it is ensemble model right and how the training happens trained uh, using bagging technique okay what makes it different what makes it different advantage combination of learning models individually any uh, classification can be wrong but the chances become very less if you have multiple you know if you if you take help from multiple people let's see if you have to join if you had to join uh, the coaching right for data science right you might have asked 10 people which one should i choose yes or no yes. most of you correct so why obviously you trusted one person also but you know that there might be some error he is not correct 100% of the time but what if in my question he just make an error that is reason for the safer side you do and that is precisely the concept behind giving the rating rating is what the average of how you felt about that product yes or no on amazon what is the rating out of 5 you give one you someone gave 5 what is the average 3 one plus 5 by 10 now in amazon even if the product is 4.5 star few people give zero star rating 0.5 1 yes they give right but yes. does that make that product bad based on his experience if you are going to purchase based on an individual's experience if you are going to purchase obviously you won't be satisfied or you will say that that guy was lying maybe he is right in his own way for him the product came uh, as as uh, bad in bad shape or damaged is it going to happen every time no no and that is the reason you take average rating and not an individual rating understood and that is what the advantage is random forest also okay so if i have to ask you in this entry what we were doing it searches for most important feature while splitting a note yes or no yes in random forest instead what will happen searches for obviously again because the concept is same most important feature but what actually changed can someone tell me tree itself among a random subset of the feature don't get confused i'm not talking about that individual tree i'm just comparing from here right so this is nothing but random subset of this correct what i mean to say is let's see if there are we, we took an example of 16 columns so out of those 16 let's say class and uh, performance and those three columns are there and out of which class is the best feature understood yes. but what if that column class is not present here will it to split based on the class no no it cannot do right what if the performance in class which was my second best is also not present then what it will do it will choose what is the best out of this particular 
number of feature n1 features and not total feature n clear yes yes so if you see there is an advantage little advantage here in random forest little advantage it is giving good priority to not so strong features also because strong features are not always present because it is a random sampling right right with replacement yes or no so what i said let's say if i am talking about 16 feature and i have to take under root of 10 right sorry under root of 16 then i'll have to take 4 out of 16 if i am selecting 4 if i am selecting 4 then what will happen i may get the best four features or one feature which is good or all the four feature may be very bad yes or no but my cho- i i have not left with any other choice than to get the best out of those four weak features my splitting will happen on all those out of those best uh, four weak features you understand what i'm trying to talk yes so in a way it is more you can say in depth it is giving priority to each and every each and every uh, you know column just give me one second guys hello <coughs> yes sorry yeah so you understand this is an hidden you can say advantage correct because let's say for example let's say yes splitting is happening according to class okay but there is a chance there is a chance that let's say if class is not present class is not present and performance also is not present what about other two other three other four how is that perform okay let's see even if it is even one tree is not performing fine doesn't matter why because we are taking the vote correct understood advantage yes that means here i can say that there is a high diversity hmm the reason i have already told you i am not writing here let's say uh, because let's say most important features of decision tree is not included let's say by chance because it is random right so i cannot say that it will not included also or i cannot say that it will get included also but by chance i am saying it is not included right in any of the decision tree so let's say if any of the decision tree let's say in third decision tree my most important features are not there right then also the split will happen correct yes yes but through if uh, we are taking all the decision trees and all the important features uh, didn't get randomly selected so in that case that model itself is not good right hmm? so in none of the decision trees hmm. we could not able to uh, randomly select this uh, important features hmm. so in that case the entire model itself is a failure right why is it a failure because the important features uh, we couldn't able to uh, correlate what is right? the what is the final goal you will say model as failure when it is not able to uh, classify the unseen data right yes or no correct yes you can say that yes you are right individual model can be a failure my decision tree 1 or decision tree 4 can or let's say in this case decision tree 2 and 5 is failure why because it was giving me wrong results 0 and 0 but actually i knew that it is 1 correct but overall random forest very less chance that it is going to be bad why because it is nothing but 
voting out of n different model based on n different decision tree your one decision tree can be uh, having an error misclassification two can be all cannot be at the same time all of your friends cannot give you a, a you know bad review unless they have decided that they need to tell you to watch any movie which is not good understood my point yes so we are using two advantage here one is the the, the term random so randomly we are selecting another thing is we are using the advantage of voting one can be wrong two can be wrong not all at once can be wrong and that was the disadvantage with decision tree precisely yes no yes okay so you can think it as bagging off n different models together okay understood is it clear yes any confusion the only thing is if someone asks you random forest you have to remember what type of sampling here is it is random sampling with replacement with replacement always remember with replacement i am repeating again and again right that is the heart of the concept rest everything is nothing but decision tree individual results will be counted right and based on the maximum votes the result will be taken right voting understood yes. now let's proceed to the boosting method sequential method of aggregation boosting okay so boosting are of different types okay i'm just taking one example right you can take the concepts here right take the concepts here <clears throat> now see what i said in bagging so if you see currently we are parallelly growing the model yes or no yes right so parallelly we are growing the model but in boosting what actually happens is it is sequential so first of all it is sequential that means the result of one decision tree goes to the another decision tree right let's see if my decision tree one right the result is going to decision tree two similarly decision tree three correct now before i move from one decision tree to another we have to just define two terms weak learners and strong learners any guesses any guesses so see important features no no not features so weak learners are let's say what is the output of my first decision tree going to be it will be looking something like this let's say there are multiple columns and uh, there is one column y and there is one column y print right correct y will be look like 0 1 1 0 0 1 right and now the y uh, y pred will look like zero let's say this is misclassified as zero one then again one zero one okay so if you see properly right if you see properly can you see that this is misclassified where this particular row is misclassified and this row is misclassified Yes. Yes. So one is predicted as zero. Here zero is predicted as one. Correct. Now this misclassificate. Uh, you know wherever the there is misclassification, that particular row, I'll term as weak learner. What are my strong learners? 
the one which is correctly yes, classified that is the so that means i am talking about again i am taking ref, taking reference from what we actually started we are taking the reference from a child which is trying to learn who is a weak child who is able to differentiate between uh, this is cow this is dog right and sorry who is, who is a weak learner is who is not able to differentiate who is a strong learner who is able to differentiate properly understood so all others these two are the weak all others are the strong learners any confusion till here no confusion okay now let's quickly go step by step and then you will be able to know how see this is also decision tree so i'm not telling you the process process you know how decision tree does the classification and that is the reason i did the decision tree at the starting so let's see in step 1 what actually happened is i have a data set right i have a data set in which i am talking about this so you have built a decision tree and we are talking about once you get the output of the first decision tree so this is the output of the first decision tree so all the features will be available correct correct okay now let's say this is my output or prediction this is my y okay or i am not talking about y in the sense is i know which one is wrong uh, or, or let's write y also okay now let's let's say that i'm talking about uh, here it is serial number 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 right so 10 rows okay so what i'm doing is i'm init initializing initial weights so this is my x1 x2 x3 x4 x5 right now based on the output right output is let's say yes no yes no yes yes no yes. that means instead of 0 1 i have just taken yes no initial weight i am writing same right i have assigned initial weight as same which is 1 by total number of rows correct so my initial weight is so i have taken 10 rows so 1 by n is nothing but 1 by 10 so for now i haven't seen what is my weak learner what is my strong learner okay so this i have assigned equal weight to all the rows is it clear not i have done nothing but assigned equal weight to all the learners clear yes yes 1 by n which is 1 by 10 in this case so i'll keep this example on 1 by 10 so that you are able to understand now let's say there are two there are two uh, or or let's say i'm talking about uh, one okay only one misclassification this is my misclassification now i will not tell it as misclassification now which word i'll use weak learner weak learner right now i'll use the term weak learner <clears throat> now what i'll do is this is the first step was initialization of weight okay i'm not writing it here but you are able to understand so use this color equal weight okay equal weight so i am assigning equal weight and that equal weight it is very easy you can just divide one by one so that all if you add all it will be equal to one yes or no what is my purpose that let's say after the result came out i just want my model to fix all the errors that i did all the misclassification i did so in a way let's see if there there is a class of 100 child or 10 child right so after exam you will concentrate on the people who failed or who passed if you are a teacher if you have to failed. teach failed failed student and that is what we are doing so after after i get the result of first decision tree i just figure out who are my weak learners we assign more weights to the weak learners and then we go ahead and again 
run a decision tree then again we come out let's say what happens is if there are there were 10 uh, out, let's say out of 1000 rows nine misclassification so after second it will be left out with let's say six or seven after that again a decision tree it will be further reduced so my my aim is to reduce the misclassifications why because strong learner is anyways generalized understood now the second step is going to be create base learners learners in sequential step sequential fashion right so i am just devising a concept here right devising a concept here let's say this is this is my this is how the split happens i am just naming it right this is how the split happens this particular this particular uh, you can say uh, this is called one stem this is called one stem this is also one stem i am just naming it splitting is obviously happening based on the splitting criteria yes or no i am just naming this particular one node and other two child node as one stem okay okay now if if i have to ask you if i have the lesser entropy what does that mean more pure no higher information gain okay so less entropy means high info gain okay this is what you you will speak correct Yes. now based on that i know i know where my weak learners exist right so let's say for example nine are my strong learner one is my weak learner so what is my total error in this case total error is nothing but sum of all the sample weights of that error row so only one error is there and what is the sample weight 1 by 10 1 by 10 so what will be the total error 1 by 10 let's see if there were three three rows in which uh, it was misclassification or in other words there were three weak learners so this would have been 3 by 10 any confusion so this is total error in this case it is only one row in which the weak learner is existing that is reason i am taking 1 by 10 if it was 2 by 10 3 by 10 n by 10 you would have taken that okay what is my step 3 we would be calculating the performance of that stem right how will i calculate the performance the formula is 1 by 2 log of 1 minus total error upon total error and what is my total error i know this my total error yes or no and this log is by the way of base e okay understood now let's say i am not going to calculate let's say i got the value after i just put 1 by 10 i got the value as x any confusion till here how i found found out the performance of my stem no step 4 is most important step there we will use our concept what is what is the step 4 it tells and from where we have started is what i said my whole purpose is to increase the weight of what weak learner and decrease the weight of strong learner can i say that increase weights of incorrect classification yes
and decrease the weight of correct classification correctly classified record basically yes or no these are nothing but strong learners okay how will i do that i found out that this value is x which is i have just assumed okay you will calculate this will be some value okay now what will happen is i have to keep on updating the weights after every day see so here what i did is before this i equate i i gave the equal weightage right equal weightage to before this only i am i have given equal weightage to all the rows why because i don't know which will be classified and which will be misclassified yes no yes after i got to know that these are the misclassified so that is nothing but my total error exist with the help of those which are misclassified right there so how will i individually target those rows i'll increase the weight of those rows can't get yes so here in the next iteration all the weights right all the strong learners weight will be decreased and the updated weight of this weak learner will increase how i'm coming to that right how i'm coming to that now new sample weight new sample weight of incorrect classified rows or weak learner is given by old weight into e raised to power performance of the stem so in this case what is the performance of stem x so let's see if my old weight was 1 by 10 which was for all the rows what is the new weight for incorrect classification into e raised to power x understood and you will be now getting that let's say i'm talking about new sample weight of strong learner is equal to see the difference here old weight into e raised to power minus of sorry uh, my bad i must write the formula first and then write the so old weight into e raised to power minus of my performance of that stem right that means 1 by 10 into e raised to power minus x you see the difference here i purposely made the sample weight of my strong learner very low and i increased the weight of my incorrect classified or weak learner so the updated weight of this So every every after every decision tree, this will keep on updating. So the now new one will be one by ten e raised to power x. Sorry, e raised to power minus x because it is a strong learner, and this is what one by ten e raised to power x. We have to increase the so that the next decision tree gives preference to this. Yes or no? You got. hello yes. you got what is the concept here no no one will speak till when till where you got the concept tell me after that i'll explain okay you got what is sequential method of training the model in boosting technique yes yes we started from one decision tree then the output will be taken to another decision tree then the output of the second decision tree will be taken to the next decision tree and so on clear before i went ahead i defined what is weak learner and what is strong learner till now you might be knowing that okay so before even i fed the model 
or or feed the data to not the model i we always feed the data to the model okay so feed feed the data to my first decision tree i just initialize all the weights as 1 by n because i don't know see before applying decision tree would i be able to know which one is going to be correct classification which one is going to be incorrect no and that is the reason i am initializing the equal weight to all the columns irrespective i don't know right correct next time what is the next step i am saying that i have to calculate the total error what is the total error in this case only one misclassification is there so 1 by 10 if there were n misclassification so total would error would have been increased yes or no yes yes now what i am doing in step 3 i am calculating a function or calculating a number which is nothing which is called the performance of that stem right this performance is half log 1 minus total error upon total error this will give some value i am calling it i got x clear this can be anything right based on my total error yes or no correct yes now <clears throat> now what i am saying is after that i have to purposely increase the weight of my incorrect classification or weak learners that that is what the purpose of boosting technique is because at last you have to be more accurate right so we are going to increase the weights of incorrect classification and decrease the weight of what correct classification that means after exams i am concentrating more on the people who are performing very less who will i take the mock interview more of the people who have already got five offer letters or who are not getting offer letters was not get right so i'll concentrate more on those people right so that is what i'm doing how will i do how will i increase so just i just trick my model by multiplying with the positive so e raised to power x right where x is nothing but my performance of that particular stem right now new sample weight of my strong learner i have negated i have decreased it so actually i am doing that that i am increasing the weight of my weak learner and decreasing the weight of my strong learner understood any confusion till here it's clear no okay if it is if, if you have no confusion that means you are able to understand right how right how the things work how we are training our model right how we are training our model okay clear okay understood now coming back to our random forest okay random forest which is nothing but a boosting or bagging technique bagging 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 technique see we will finish the theory we will take a break once we'll come back then we'll see the codes okay okay hyper parameter okay this word right this word usually uh people see it right people see it with the great respect that uh you know this this particular topic hyper parameter tuning which is in a way if you see is nothing as such it is let's see if you have a radio right if you remember i'm not sure whether you people uh, so they used yeah, to yeah yeah they seen this adjusting right? these so they used to so adjusting and there used to be one knob right which we used to see at where it is getting to see the channel right and this is what right and this is how it looked so radio what we used to do is in order to tune to a particular channel we had to just rotate the knob yes, yes. do you used to remember exactly where was the best tuning where the clarity or the was my clarity 
was not remembered right it was actually set at the real time you had to see actually see where the best clarity is currently also if you are living in new delhi right and if you are listening to the fm right nowadays they have increased the number of uh, tars earlier what used to happen is when we we had to uh, you know we had to hear right the voice it it used to be distorted now in order to order to get that we had to just tune even i know what what is the uh, frequency of radio mirchi 90 so so not always it is clear at this frequency sometimes it is clear at this sometimes it is clear at this sometimes it is clear at this yes or no this happens yes 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 and we don't know where it will be clear so what we do is we actually try this also this also this also correct along with 98.3 wherever we think is the best tuned that is what we use in our vehicle car right bolo yes no similarly similarly based on your requirement wherever you think that let's say you are happy with 60% of accuracy in your problem you are happy with this much accuracy also maybe you want to quickly make a model and by the end of the day you have to show to your manager any you are you are fine with 60 70 you know better Uh, i mean if you are getting a good accuracy then it's fine otherwise any accuracy at least you are making a model right similarly for me for my question the accuracy requirement can be different clear so the hyper parameter tuning is nothing but when you tune the parameters to get the output which is required by you now the requirement can be anything requirement can be let's say i want to increase the predictive power or what is predictive power that means my model is better at predictivity another requirement can be that i have to increase the model speed which is reverse of complexity let's say time complexity yes or no how will i tune the model so so i what i have done is i have divided this hyper parameter tuning into two different parts right the first part i have told as first part i have told that increasing the predictive power first of all have you all understood what is hyper parameter tuning the process process of fixing the parameters in a way which produce result for you for example let's say what i how will i do the parameter tuning i'll do let's say based on uh, okay that was in my previous uh, note let's say i'll i'll set the max depth is equal to 4 and that is what i have tuned my model why because i seen i have seen that i have tried max depth 3 also 4 also 5 also 6 also and i found out that at max uh, sorry max depth is equal to 4 my model is performing better understood what i just said i am saying max depth all, all of you know yes. i have set it yes. to 4 based on my model why because i tried 3 also 4 also 5 also 2 also and i saw that at when i reached the 4 it performed best out of these four and all the model that i tried and at 5 it start decreasing 3 it was decreasing 4 it was fine again right so this so 4 if it is what i'll do based on my experience i'll take max depth is equal to 4 that is what my hyper parameter is and what i have done is i have tuned it to be equal to 4 yes no yes yes you will see the radio you will remember okay 
now coming on to i have i have uh, this is just my bifurcation what i can do is i can uh, you know bifurcate the hyperparameter into two parts or tuning of hyperparameters into two categories one is you know increasing the predictive power and second is you know working out with model speed again there is a trade off yes or no sometimes if you want your model to uh, get to a good accuracy maybe you have to try a lot of things which may consume time yes no correct so it is a trade off if if you need to have good predictive power sometimes you have to play with your time you need more time correct Yes. Yes. Right. Now I let's categorize this and uh, let's say that increasing the predictive power and estimator. That is one of the parameters we use, right? Okay. Let's say if 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 what is an estimator? That is number of available trees, right? An estimator is number of available trees or estimators that I have at that point of time. Okay. now let's say if if we have more trees what will happen your performance will increase or decrease in better estimate performance will increase yes and what will decrease your computational power right your speed will decrease there is a reason we are called data scientist why because this no one is not even me i am not going to tell you which one you should compromise this you should be able to understand based on the problem that you are solving i gave you an example let's see if i am working on uh, any healthcare data what is more important my speed or my performance of the model performance performance no matter if it takes let's say 5 days to train let it be because i don't want to play with anyone's uh, you know uh, anyone's life or health for that matter so what will i do i'll work out on that similarly what what else needs to be there so you can see there is always a trade off what is the best value up to you i'm just listing out the things for you okay max features right all of we all know right min sample Leaf again. I am not going to discuss these things. What is mean sample leaf? Minimum sample in the leaf. Right. Max depth. All these things. Right. There can be multiple more things that we studied there. So all those things will help you increase your or decrease your or tune your performance. Here the word is tuning. It's not increasing or decreasing. Why tuning? because even if you are not getting the best accuracy but that may be the best model for you based on your requirement and that is the reason the word is tuning got my point on the other hand if you speak about the model speed what are the things that may improve the model speed hmm reduce complexity no no theoretically don't tell me i'm we are now talking in the terms of parameters there is a parameter called n jobs right so there is if if you set it to 1 can set it to minus 1 you can set it to 2 also 3 also based on so so if you are set it to 1 it will use one processor and if you set it to minus 1 there is no limit so your model can consume all the cores of your processor right so let's say if you are multitasking on that particular machine then it would be tough for you if your model is very complex and it is taking time and if you are setting it as minus 1 it will consume all of your processor and other works may get hampered understood my point so if you want to increase the speed and if you want to finish it quick then you can use minus 1 otherwise if you want to keep running it in parallel though you are fine with it to run for uh you know days then what you can do is 
you can use one processor see all these things i'm telling in the terms of my local in cloud these things changes because you are there you can increase the number of processor that is because it is on demand yes or no you can scale up correct yes the another thing is ob score we i just sometimes ago i was talking about out of bag so let's say let's say if i am talking about a decision tree right and now let's say there are so what i have did is i have taken randomly but some samples would be left out yes or no yes yes that particular sample i'll use it for testing which so or let's say if i have took this as a subset okay and i had trained my model on this and let's say this is left out and that is reason it is called out of bag let's say if if you can imagine it as there are balls lying of all different colors you have one uh, bag you filled as many as you can fill and then you came out there are a few balls left okay you trained your model on the ball that you carried to, in your bag right and you will test your model based on what was left out of your bag understood and i'll compare the ov score now how is it how is it let's say if i'm just giving you one example okay how is it related to this not exactly in the terms of it will improve the power but let's say this is 20 i'm using for training 10 i'm using for testing tr means training te means testing clear okay now let's say this is nothing but my out of bag sample which i'm using for testing yes and what is the total error so here it will happen not here here whatever it will happen this will be called as ob error rate right now let's say you have told your model that this is the ob score i am fine with correct so it will keep on reiterating and building the models for you till it gets the exact that score or less than that clear so let's say if you are fine with i said if you are fine with 60% accuracy why will you tell your model that you have to do 70% you want tail right i'm just giving a ideal example right you have to quickly finish as quick as possible then you will keep your model as light as possible correct correct so in that way this can also be one of the criteria in order to improve your model speed so this how you can calculate this ob error rate bro huh it is there is formula the error so see your testing error your testing error will be your out of bag error that's the only concept okay 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 so the name is different that's all this is nothing but the testing error okay i said let's say you had 30 samples right 20 you used for training 10 you left out and that is reason we are calling it as out of bag now the total error because you will test here right out of these 10 not all will be let's say for example not all will be correctly classified bolo na right let's say out of 10 two are not correctly classified now the total error here whatever it is this is nothing but your out of bag error which is an error total error which we are calling as testing error but in this case we are naming it as out of bag error why because i did not use it for my training purpose just the name is different understood any confusion till here okay see when uh, we are going to when we are going to see the uh, code we are also going to uh, you know see in the terms of ov score right wherever we will see there is a kind of stability it is obviously increasing and decreasing but whenever it is kind of stable we will take the number of trees 
as equal to that. We will come to that. Okay. For now, is it clear? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Now you will ask me that group. There are so many things, right? As a human, it is not possible. To be honest, there can be. Uh, see, if if I tell you, okay, just a example, uh, and I am going to explain it in grid search C. Okay. Now, just take an example. Let's say I am just talking about next step. uh and uh, two 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 more features mean sample leaf and all this let's say max uh, depth i'm trying trying out with 3 4 5 8 10 five this i'm trying out with 4 10 12 15 18 any anything you can fill any parameter which we spoke about here and let's say this is i'm uh, trying to take any three values uh let's say 3 8 9 can you see if i have to find out the best possible scenario or the best combination of the result it can be this this and this or this this and this or this this so you can apply the permutation combination how many combination you will have to try is it possible for a human being to do all these things and keep a track of all the iterations that you are doing bolo na in the first iteration you are using 3 10 and 3 respectively here i am only taking three parameters there you can take 10 parameters 15 parameters 20 parameter again what can be another scenario 10 12 8 sorry 3 12 3 right 3 15 8 3 15 3 so it can be and i am only dealing with the first i can go with 4 and then see the numbers can be anything okay so 5 right 5 p1 no sorry it is 5 factorial right plus 4 factorial plus 3 factorial right if i am not wrong i have to revisit the permutation combination but this is the number of ways in which you can use these techniques yes or no so is it possible so this is 5 into 4 into 3 into 2 right plus 4 into 3 into 2 plus 3 into 2 so you can imagine there is these meaning uh, you can say combinations possible is it possible to keep a track as a human being no you is it is not possible and for that we have grid search cv for us to rescue right what it does is you just pass a list of argument which you want to try you want your model to try you understand what i'm saying let's say i want my model to try out max depth is equal to 3 also 4 also 5 also 8 also 10 also so what i'll do is in the grid search cv i'll pass all the values which i want my model to try out after that again for other parameter i'll pass all the values which i want my uh, model to try out and what grid search cv will give me is at last it will tell me it will obviously it will take some time to train the model on that and at last it will be able to tell me that which is the best combination we will see we are we are going to see the grid search cv also in the random forest so it will tell that max depth is equal to 4 some other parameter is equal to 15 so a combination it will give you combination 4 15 and 8 this is the best combination out of all these right so what it is doing in the back end is it is trying out with all the possible combination understood so making life easier for you can we define so this is not something that we can that needs to be studied this is just i am taking a reference so that some people might have this confusion how to keep a track so this grid search cv is nothing but member of model selection technique from sklm right which is a cross validation technique in order to Look for the metrics or 